has a mandate for parents to be sure to ensure their children. I agree with that. I just know that if we don't go and require everyone to have health insurance, the health insurance industry will still game the system. Understand that when Senator Clinton says a mandate, it's not a mandate on government to uh, provide health insurance. It's a mandate on individuals to purchase it. Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama squaring off over their health care plans in a debate Thursday in Texas, a state with the highest rate of uninsured adults. Here with a look at what each candidate is proposing is Betsy McCoy, the former lieutenant governor of New York and an adjunct senior fellow at the Hudson Institute. Betsy McCoy, welcome. Thank you. What are the key elements of the Obama-Clinton plans that our viewers should know about? Well, Senator Clinton's plan would require everyone to purchase a health plan. Some people would be eligible for government subsidies, but everyone would be required to purchase it. And if they didn't, they would face penalties, perhaps even having the, their wages garnished. Under Senator Obama's plan, he pledges to make health care, health insurance, excuse me, affordable but would require only that parents buy health insurance for their children. And as he pointed out in the debate on Thursday night, two-thirds of the children who are, quote, uninsured are actually already eligible for government programs, but their parents have failed to sign them up. Out of the 9 million children who are considered uninsured, 6 million are currently eligible for government programs. And in Texas, 850,000 children who are classified as uninsured by the U.S. Census are actually eligible for Medicaid or S-CHIPs. Well, why, why if, if, if that's true, that two-thirds of, of these children qualify for Medicaid, qualify for S-CHIP, already government programs. And excellent why, ones that why, provide dental care, prescription but, drugs, hospitalization, preventive why, why care. Why aren't they enrolled? And uh, do we need another government program to, to, to help them out? I wish the moderators in the debate had asked such an important question question. The state of Texas runs radio ads, hands out brochures in many languages, and engages community groups to reach out to parents, but many parents simply fail to enroll their children. Do we need another government program? That's a very important question. And that's an important question nationwide because 14 million of the 47 million so-called uninsured are eligible for government programs and will get health care the minute they need it. One of the issues that Obama makes, one of the points that Obama makes is that one issue with health care is price, affordability. A lot of people don't want to spend the money because it's expensive to get an insurance policy if you don't get it from your employer. Do either candidate, Obama or Clinton, do anything to, low, to try to lower the price of coverage? Actually, no. In fact, both their plans would increase the price of coverage, although offering government uh, subsidies for people who need help buying it. But they increase the price by requiring that people not only have a health plan, but have a fully loaded health plan, a comprehensive plan. And what are those that elements that are fully many loaded? many extras. Well, from state to state, it currently varies. But in Texas, for example, it has to include marriage counseling. Marriage counseling? Marriage counseling. Health insurance? Acupuncture. And many other extras. Something in fact, like in vitro fertilization in some right. cases? Most states have done this. The state lawmakers have passed law after law in response to the lobbyists requiring that every plan sold in that state uh, include all these extras. The first day I became lieutenant governor of New York and I reported to my office for the first time, there was a long line of lobbyists waiting to see me. Number one in line, the acupuncturist. <laughs> Number three, the chiropractors. They were there to try to convince me that every state, every plan sold in New York State had to include unlimited benefits in their field. So the, the, the providers make out very well. And the politicians who pass these laws receive huge campaign contributions from these providers, but the consumers find that they can't afford insurance. Because it's all, load, all, all loaded up. Now, let, let me ask you about young people in particular, because as you know, a lot of young people think they're going to live forever, so they don't need insurance, and they don't want to pay their marginal income to buy insurance. Uh, but, I am but, but very you, surprised that Senator Obama did not raise this issue, because the Clinton plan is a unfair hidden tax on young adults. She would require all young adults, people in their 20s and 30s, to buy health insurance, but more than that, to pay the same price for it as a 55-year-old, as a middle-ager. What's the justification for that? Well, she says one price for all is fairer, but in fact, what she's doing is requiring young adults who are already subsidizing the elderly through Medicare payroll taxes, Social Security taxes, she now wants them to subsidize the middle-aged group. And I was surprised that Senator Obama didn't call her on this because in Texas, for example, right now, 
a 25-year-old man can buy a $1,000 deductible for $70. A 55-year-old man has to pay $272, right? She would require that they pay the same price, and obviously that, a lot more for the young adult. And that means that means it's going to be harder for young adults to be able to afford insurance. And yet they're going to be forced to buy it. And her her plan would outlaw the, ta the price breaks that insurers now give young adults in 47 out of 50 states. All right, Betsy McCoy, thanks. Very informative. We appreciate it. Still ahead, adios, Fidel. Our panel weighs in.